All right, let's talk about rhythm. Ask any student of mine from the past 10 years and, and ask them, uh, what does Dr. Kendall say the magic word is? And if they remember anything from my class, they will tell you subdivision. I'm going to ask you many, many, many times in the two years that you're taking this class, what's the magic word as it relates to rhythm? And you will all answer in unison, subdivision. Subdivision is the most important thing as regard rhythm, in my opinion. So let's talk about what it is. Rhythm, of course, um, we've defined as the duration of sounds and silences in music, but let's, let's get a little bit more specific. We, we talk about meters, we talk about the beat, we talk about kind of how the, um, how the music ebbs and flows. Let's talk about a meter that we know well, 4-4 four, four time, probably the very first one most of us ever learned. And, uh, and talk about rhythm. Now, if I were to write a measure of rhythm like this, This is fairly easy to count. This is how we learn how to count uh, uh, when in third grade or fifth grade or seventh grade, whenever we began band or choir. We learned one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm adding the repeat so I don't have to write them all uh, several times. Okay, and that is, uh, that's easy enough to do. Unfortunately, many students do not get past the habit of counting one, two, three, four. Actually, students at least count one, two, three, four. I'm happy because we're halfway there already. Some uh, students and ensemble members, unfortunately, have gotten out of the habit of counting at all. But assuming that at least the, the length of the beat, the, uh, the value of the beat, which is the quarter note, is being counted, yeah, we're, we're getting there. But that's not good enough in all cases. And let me show you how. If I were to do this, and I were to put an X to mark where the beat is, it would be easy enough. It would be under every note. One, two, three, four. But imagine in the next measure, we throw some eighth notes in there. Now we put X's down for beats. One, so far so good. We run into trouble in beat two. The first one is easy enough, but there's nothing to tell you where that second eighth note on beat two or the end of beat two comes in. The same thing with the end of beat four. There is nothing particularly there that tells you where that eighth note comes in. Because we are just counting one, two, three, four. And so um, I will perform this uh, properly. I'm subdividing in my own head. T, 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 and then we can repeat it or, or go on to other rhythms. Now, I know that because I know how to subdivide. In my mind, I was subdividing at the level of the eighth note. And I'll, we'll talk about uh, the minimum level of subdivision in a moment. But if I were not doing that, if, if I were not doing that, if I were only um, counting one, two, three, four, I could perform it this way and there would be nothing to tell me that I was wrong. So I'm going to do it incorrectly now and you'll, you'll see where I'm wrong. Ready? And T, 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 T. Now, of course, I was very early here and I was very late there, but without a lower level of subdivision to tell me where these eighth notes go, there's nothing to tell me that I am incorrect. And of course, this is a little bit crazy because we know that uh, this is uh, incorrect, but when we get into very, very um, complicated rhythms, complex rhythms, uh, rhythms with, with, with uh, several levels of subdivision, this will become important. So, um, when we subdivide, it is important that we subdivide at the level of the smallest note value in the entire example. Now in this case, the smallest note value in this two-measure example is the eighth note. So we should subdivide at the level of the eighth note. And the way to subdivide at the eighth note is to split the beat in half. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Now we will see how to perform this properly. T, 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 T. Notice, 
knowing where each of the eighth notes were, I was clapping the subdivision, that ensured that my eighth notes were spot on target. If I had done them incorrectly as I done, had done before, it would be obvious. I would have gone T, 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 because they didn't line up with the subdivision, it was now obvious that these uh, were these notes that I'd done correctly were in the wrong place, this one early and this one late. Um, a, a bit of warning. In a, a relatively easy example like this, um, it's still easy to be lazy in thinking, you know, I don't need to subdivide in this first measure, there aren't any, uh, there aren't any eighth notes in it. I don't need to subdivide in the first beat of the second measure because there aren't any eighth notes in it. I'll subdivide when I get here. The problem with that is you may not subdivide. Okay? You're basically trying to shift gears in the middle of things right there. And it might be very difficult for you to do so, especially when the melodies, uh, the melodies or the rhythms related to the melodies become much more complex. So it is important that you subdivide the entire example at the level of the smallest note value. And that is true even if there is only one eighth note in the entire example. You still must subdivide at that level in order to play or to perform this uh, rhythmic figure properly. Okay. And so this is the uh, single subdivision using the eighth note. There are other subdivisions that are possible. So let's have a look at different ways that we can divide the beat. Now so far we're just talking about simple meter, 4-4-3-4-2-4, four, 2-2-4-2, four, four, two, four, two, two, four, two, etc. Uh, we'll get into compound meter in just a moment. So let's begin the same way we did. Let's throw a couple of eighth notes in here. So now what do I, have, I have done is I've thrown on beat two of the second measure a set of four sixteenth notes into the mix. Now, the principle that I uh, gave you just a few uh, moments ago still applies. The smallest note value existing in this entire example is the sixteenth note. So you must double subdivide or subdivide at the level of the sixteenth note, which is if you're speaking it, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, and so on. And so I will clap the subdivision and perform this example. Ready? 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and T, 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 Notice the subdivision allowed me to be right on top of it. Now you may ask again, uh, similar to what we did in the previous examples, like, well, maybe we can just do a single subdivision here. T, 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 and then maybe switch to double subdivision once we get there. Again, switching gears is hard. Easy to make a mistake, easy to lose your mental focus by having to change the parameters of the subdivision in mid, uh, in, in mid phrase like that. So make it easier for yourself, double subdivide at the, the sixth level of the 16th note every single time. T, 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 and there we are. Now, the, the very same thing applies in compound meter. And actually, I'll get into that in the next video. So this is how we subdivide with rhythm in simple meter.